Greetings from the past, fellow time travelers. I am the Sporkinator, and welcome to a walkthrough of 20XX's Armored Core achievement. The seed is G-I-T-G-U-D in Seed Racer. I typed this in one day and played it Destiny style and discovered it was a great seed for the Armored Core achievement, which requires beating the game with only one HP. And I'm playing as Ace because it has a level one wave beam slash spinning glaive, and between the wave beam and the spinning glaive, I'd much rather have the spinning glaive. So that's why I'm playing as Ace for this. So in addition to Final Shell in this run, you will also be finding Armor Nuts on level 6 in a side path if you play it Destiny style and always take first boss portal, which is what I'm going to do just to make sure I can reproduce the same results. Because I think changing boss order might change what augments you find and stuff, and I don't- I haven't actually bothered to research it. So I'm just going to go with what I know for sure works. So down here, if we fall carefully, we have the Spinning Glaive. Or the Spin to Win Sword, as some call it. Fantastic weapon. Love it. And then we just gotta get out of here, and there's that guy down there. I usually kill him, but I don't think he drops anything, and it's kind of more hassle than it's worth. So, uh, gotta jump over the lasers carefully here. Make our way to the glory zone. This is a really tricky finesse glory zone, but it does have the ox jack arm, which is an instant buff to attack and power damage. So if we're careful, we can make this. Oh my gosh, that jump right there always makes me nervous. If I fail the glory zone, that's where I fail it at. Freaking hate that jump. But oh well, here we go. Got the Oxjack arm, which not only reduces charge time, but is a plus two to attack and power damage. Oh, these these freaking mortars, dude. These are like some of the most annoying enemies in the game. Just gotta get rid of them really carefully. Okay, that's done. Then there's these platforms. They're a ton of fun. There's a couple nuts here that you might want to grab just because you can. It's not that difficult. Spin to win to get that guy out of the way. Watch out for that bat. Oh, oh I'm going to kill this guy. There's, there's no reason to kill this guy out here. I just always do it anyway. Spin to win, and that bat is gone. Like, your spinning glaive actually reaches through the platform, and here we can safely trade our health for nuts until the machine explodes. If we don't take any hits prior to that, that leaves us with 5 HP, which is more than enough to deal with Kerr. It's a bit tricky, because we don't have the machine gun to repel his Quint lasers. But everything is going to be fine. It's especially tricky to fight him as Ace, so if you'd rather have ranged attacks, you feel free to run the seed with Nina if you want to use Wave Beam, or just keep the end buster. There is a Scatter Blast later, but I'm not a huge fan of Scatter Blast either. If I'm going to take a weapon with no range, I might as well be Ace. And so I am Ace. Oh, jeez. He got... Actually, he didn't get me. For a minute, I thought he got me. He did, actually didn't hit me at all. I'm still at 5 HP. Dang, I'm panicking for no reason here. Oh, man. This is so irritating without the, the uh, machine gun. Really wish... Oh, oh, jeez, man. About to die over here. Anyway, got that juicy Quint laser, and we're off to fight the Astral Twins. Killing them with Quint laser might actually be a pretty effective tactic, since their flame shield can't block it. Quint laser simply can't be blocked. That is not a thing that happens. One does not simply block the Quint laser. Uh, get this nut really carefully. Get this guy out of the way. Get them all out of the way. our way over here. Oh, okay, this is the lab. This is where Final Shell is. So we want to get this. It trades 7 of our HP for 14 armor. 7 of our max HP, that is. So now that we've taken Final Shell, as always, we need to be careful and not take damage if we can avoid it. Get that nut really carefully. There we go. I hate it when it's right up against the spikes. There's some armor in that box, so make sure to grab that, and this is be swift. This is pretty simple to do as Ace, just kind of jump and spin, and you'll wipe them all out. Dodge the bullets just because it's not worth taking damage. I mean, the, the timer on this is pretty generous, and there's the Owlhawk body, which I guess I don't really have much use for, because regenerating health is not useful. I just always complete all glory zones, it's a habit of mine. So just because I go in a glory zone and take the Owlhawk body doesn't mean you have to. You can skip that if you want. 
Because being at 1 HP for the for most of the run, regenerating health is not going to do anything for you. So if we come over here, we're actually going to find a Ninja Sash to increase our speed. There we go. Now I'm just going to wait for these platforms to appear and jump on them as they do. Not difficult, just a little bit of a waiting game. In this box, we have a bunch of nuts. And now we have reached the boss. Haha. -ha. In this box, of course, we have whatever, and there's a shop here. We're actually gonna buy Hoarder's Might and Armor Deflating, because Armor Deflating is a guaranteed plus two armor every single level start. And Hoarder's Might gives you more damage the more nuts you have, so that can help you take down foes quicker later on in the run once we actually have a sizable amount of money or nuts. And remember, it's not worth getting hit, so take your time on the twins. He's gonna breathe fire, so I'm backing away. And one of them is gone. When you kill them before level five, you can actually take them down one at a time, which makes things a lot simpler. Now we're just gonna beat the crap out of this guy, and it's over. Perfect. Literally perfect. I don't think I took a single hit. Here's a penguin repro. That will also help you take down your foes. Here's the flame shield. I always take flame shield because it can help block ice and stuff in the next level. And the Vile Visage level later too. Vile Visage is actually going to be on level 6 playing the Seed Destiny style and always taking the first boss portal. So that is what we are doing. There's no reason to kill that guy. I just always do. You think you can escape from me, Flap? Wrong again. Okay, so what is actually down this side path? I need to check this. I can't remember what's here. It's probably... Actually, yeah, I know what it is. It's a potato, right? Called it. And picking that up is tricky, too. You need to dash and press activate thing and grab it real quick. I think they should actually just remove this ice shooter here because it's very tricky. To grab the item and not get hit, you have to kind of press two buttons at once. So maybe it's not that hard, but I think it's just unnecessarily... Unfair, in a way. I don't know. It's fine. I got it. And this is why I don't want to play this seat as Nina. That guy was down there, and it's kind of hard to hit him with any weapon that's... Well, you could probably hit him with the wave beam, but... I don't like the wave beam, but trying to hit him with the end buster? Good luck with that. And it's not that you have to kill him, it's just... I like to kill everything. So here, we're gonna spin to win all the way down. That's annoying with Nina, because you have to wait for the enemies to come up so you can shoot him with the end buster, if you have the end buster. Otherwise, I guess, once again, you could probably wave beam that, but I just... I don't use the wave beam. There's some nuts over here that we're gonna take. And... Oh, jeez. Just gonna wipe those guys out and then go to the glory zone. Like I said, I never remember exactly what's in each glory zone. I just know what I'm gonna find altogether by the end of the run. I think this one... What is this one? Oh, it's the helmet! This is important! This causes health to sometimes grant armor. So that was actually a direct goal, and just now I got armor, so I was actually able to show that off. And I lost the armor because I got hit by the fire from that guy. Give me that five nuts. Jeez, man. Five nuts was about to fall in the lava, and once it falls in the lava, I can still retrieve it if I'm tricky, but it's... risky. Anything over here? Okay, there's nothing over here. Wipe you out. Okay, we want to leave this guy alive so we can climb up here and bust this box open for more armor. I am getting hit way more times than when I ran this seed before. But that's partly what makes this such a great seed, is you actually have enough armor to get away with quite a few hits without failing the run. Did I miss a token? I can't remember if that vending machine was supposed to do a thing. I can't remember if I was supposed to have found a token or not. I don't think I missed the token. I know at some point I put a token in, in one of the slot machines and I get nuts for it, but maybe this is not that time. Hard to say. Alright, Penguin. Ah, oh, really? He dodged it. There. Nothing is ruined, everything's fine. Penguin is down and now we're taking ice, which is super useful for disabling 
fire things on Agnesort. Which is where we're going next because we're fighting the Perforator. And this may not be the ideal boss order, it's just the one that I always follow because when I when I test new seeds in Seed Racer for the fun of it, I always play them Destiny style. Just pretend Destiny is on and always take first boss portal, so... Having ran the seed a few times in that order, I intend to do the exact same order here. Alright, that was way too many hits. We need to be more careful. Oh, here's what we can do. Since I didn't waste all my energy on the penguins, since I was more careful, I actually have energy to turn off those flame shooters and make everything safe again. Okay, I forget what's in this glory zone, but we're gonna find out in a moment. I think it's the armature legs, and I probably don't even want them. Just calling it right now, it's gonna be something I don't even want. Also, you notice I have a mod installed that makes the colored cores appear on my character colored, so... I just like it, because it's handy and it's fun, and you can easily tell what you have equipped without having to pause the game and, and look here at these. Like, over here on the, on the left side, so... That's why I think it's handy. Oh, it's Oxjack legs, but either way, I have the Draco legs, and I prefer double jump over, over air dash. So if you want air dash, knock yourself out. I won't stop you. Just gonna refill my... I did, bought too much energy. I should not have bought that one. That was a waste of one nut, I guess, but... That doesn't seem to be a huge deal. It's fine. Nothing's ruined. I think there's... What is up here? I remember what's up here. Just give me a moment, and it'll come to me. This is free armor, is what this is. It's armor bloom. So, if you make it up carefully and don't get hit six times... Ow! If you make it up there carefully and don't get hit six times, that's actually worth going for. Do I need to kill this guy? Does he drop anything? Ah, that's a nut. And you. You also drop a nut. And I want it. That was dumb, but I went for it anyway. I just really wanted that one nut. There's some more armor there. Like, this is actually consistent. Every enemy that drops armor in any given seed will always drop armor when you run it again. However, health granting armor is random. The last time I ran this seed, this HP drop here did not grant armor. This time it might. If I can grab it without falling. Alright, you get out of the way. There's the token. That's gonna be worth a few nuts. Oh, see, this time it granted armor. Yeah, last time I ran this seed, that health did not grant armor. That particular one didn't, so it's actually random. Every single run, you may not get the exact same results. Your mileage may vary. But this is consistent. I knew I was going to get a bunch of nuts for that. And here we have the Perforator. Queen of the Angles. Mother of Bullets. Mother of Bullets, Queen of the Angles, and the first bots is what it says if you fight her on level 8. Hey, Perforator, come back to the middle. I prefer you here in the middle. Can you stop doing this? Ah, perfect. This is what's handy about Ace's Spinning Glaive. When you use it on the ground, it actually reaches high enough to hit Perforator in that spot. So in this run, there are two Striking Feathers and a Force Metal Shell. The Force Metal Shell is from a shop, and between those three things, you can only get away with taking one of them. So I'm going to be taking the Force Metal Shell later. But if you're power damage focused, only take one of the Striking Feathers, because there is a Glass Cannon in the second Agnus... or not Agnosaur, the second Vacuolab stage. And that glass cannon can take away two of your max HP. So you can get away with one striking feather or one force metal shell, but you can't take more than one of those three available augments because you'll have too much HP and won't get the achievement. I want that energy. But not that badly. Just gonna come down here, bust this open for an attack upgrade. That helps. Oh, geez. Wipe that guy out real quickly, quick like, and spin to win! And there's some armor there, how about that? And some health, which may or may not grant armor, your mileage may vary. Oh, down here I think is an alternate primary weapon, this is the spear. If you're playing as Nina, you will get... Uh, Scatter Blast, you'll get Scatter Blast for that, I think. So if Scatter Blast is your thing, this is where you come to find it. Or if you like the spear with Ace, as you can see, there it is. Knock yourself out if that's your favorite weapon. Do what you want. There's some more armor, man. I tell you what, this seed is really generous with armor. That's why it's perfect for this achievement. Get that 
guy out of the way. Go down here. There's some more armor from that health. Oh my goodness. All right, I forget what's in here, but we're gonna find out real quick. It, this is probably the armature legs that I don't even want. But I always like completing these, just for the heck of it. Especially because in challenge runs, they're worth score, even if you don't want the core that's in here. Oh, it's, no, it's, I was wrong, it's the Drake of an arm. This is what I'm replacing the Oxjack arm with. I'm taking a hyper, super hyper charge or whatever, ultra charge, I think it's called, and more attack strength that that arm brings. Okay, so before I get close to this guy, I'm gonna fully charge, rush in and attack. Then back off, jump over the fire, and do it again. And that's how you beat that guy without taking damage, and without having to use powers, in case you were wondering. That bamboozled me quite a few times. I didn't know how to deal with that guy, because he was in that narrow hallway, being all irritating and garbage. There's a nut. Agnesword is really irritating with its blue fire. I probably need to practice it more, but as you can see here, I'm actually doing pretty good, if I do say so myself. It really helps when you have a spin to win sword, because nothing can touch you if you're careful. Okay, I made it onto the platform. I just have to chill now. This, see, see, see where I'm standing? If I'm standing there, the blue fire there actually doesn't touch me, even though it kind of looks like it should. Hitboxes, man, how do they work? So here's a system restore. Do not take it. Take the Gapminder and the Charge Nuts, and Armatorts Pound if you really want that arm. I'm skipping it, because I'm going Dracobent. The full set's not in the run, but I'm taking what parts I can get. Okay, I'm just gonna hop over that. I think there's actually an Owlhawk helmet later in the run, after I find Armor Nut. So if I want to, I can actually ditch some of my armor generation for power conservation. But... I'm not really sure if that's the best decision or not, I guess it's all subjective. Why did I come here again? I already got what I wanted. And my my energy is full, so... Let's take on the Rolster! A.K.A. not Armored Armadillo. Okay, he's jumping. What I do every time I fight Rolsters, I, I use my primary on him until he starts bouncing around the room. Like, like, like he's going to now. Then I use the flame shield on him to stop him in his tracks. The last time I ran this seed, I beat Rolster without taking damage, but this time, as you can see, I already got hit and lost some of my massive supply of armor. Which is a little bit sad, but hey. Now we just gotta wear down- ow, oh, jeez. So many hits. So once we wear down both halves, he'll actually be completely dead. There we go. Here's Quantum Spook. If you want to shoot through walls, knock yourself out. It's not my thing. I want my ice to explode on walls. I mean, it is useful against shields. So there's Striking Feather 1 of 2. Either take that or the next one that comes, but not both. And now we're off to level 6 Vile Visage. Frost Ore. I think there's a side path somewhere in this level with Armor Nut that I missed the last time I ran this. This is actually, like, my fourth or fifth attempt recording this, because I keep being stupid and missing the side path that I want to go to. I'm just oblivious to side paths so often. Oh, jeez. I, I want that energy. Give me that, yes. You'll notice I'm dodging all this ice without using the flame shield. It's actually smarter to use the flame shield, because the ice will just hit your flame shield and vanish. I think the side path is after the glory zone. I really hope I don't miss it. I need to focus on finding that. But we're gonna see what's in here. I think this is probably the Armatort legs, because I know they're somewhere in this run, and I never take them, given that I already have either double jump or air dash, depending on what you get. Yep, Armatort legs. If you want to hover instead of double jump, I mean knock yourself out. I'm not gonna stop you. Ooh, that health grind me armor. Nice. Okay, the side path is down there. That's what I missed. And the only way to get down there is to hit a teleporter. So we gotta go up here, and then jump up here, and boom, we're down there. So over here is gonna be Armor Nut, and that is super helpful. Oh, I freaking pressed the wrong button. I'm trying to activate my Flame Shield. Man, that area is just chaos, let me tell you what. And I don't always tell you what, but when I tell you what, I tell you what. Oh, that just teleports me over there, jeez. That's worth five nuts. That's worth not getting hit. 
I think I just recast my flame shield for no reason to make sure it was up as I hit it through there. So now what do we have? We have Armator's helmet on top of armor nuts. We have so much armor generation. Okay, so here's the force metal shell that I'm taking. I'm also going to cash in and I'm going to get... Actually, no, I can't take that. I cannot take brain food bunch. That would give me too much HP. I almost made a huge mistake, man. I started thinking in terms of a normal run and not an Armored Core achievement run. Yeah, normally I would totally take that Brain Food Lunch. But there ain't nothing wrong with a Thunder's Boon. Thunder's Boon's very strong as well. It's actually kind of the better choice in a way. Do I have the Mortar? No, I don't. Okay, so I do have to wear this guy down the hard way. Just gonna beat him to a pulp. I'm just gonna shoot ice at him. This seems to work. There we go, spin to win and he's done. Here we get a ton more speed, which definitely makes up for the force metal shell I took that slowed me down. And now I'm getting my force nova to disable lasers and stuff, super helpful. Always take it, in my opinion. And we're off to fight Death Lotus in the second Vaculab stage on level seven. So since I took the force metal shell, I have to find the side path in here that gives me a glass cannon. Otherwise, as you can see, I currently have three max HP, and that's too much. We won't get the achievement with three max HP. It has to be back down to one. So whether or not I wanted to find it, I have to find it now. Besides, with Final Shell, there's no reason not to take a glass cannon, because once you're down to one HP, it actually won't take any more HP away from you. There was a nut back there, but I don't care enough to go back and get it. So that guy's dead. I forget what's in here. It's the same glory zone several times in this run, too. It's kind of weird how they keep reusing this one, just on this particular seed. Usually they're a lot more varied, but I guess with this seed, you're just having bad luck. Luck, of course, being in quotation marks, given that this is 100% reproducible and reliable. But this shows you the easy way of getting through there. And there's the Owlhawk helmet. So if you want to focus on powers, definitely take that. I'm going to pass and just keep the Armator's dome to see how much armor I can generate by the end of the game because that's fun. There was more armor there, too. I think that dropped from one of the enemies, so that should show up every time. I had to use my Force Nova to race that missile. It was just too annoying. Like, it will eventually expire if you dodge it long enough. But it's kind of easier just to race it with Force Nova and call it a freaking day. I didn't even see that guy there. Holy cow. Okay, that hurt. That hurt a lot. But over here, we actually... Oh, freaking crap, dude. Oh, I gotta go over here. I see how this works. I don't know how you get up there without powers. This is tricky. But anyway, there's the glass cannon that lowers our max HP back down to one for the achievement. And gives us more attack and power damage, so it's all good. I'm gonna grab a few more nuts. Stupid red flap. Oh my gosh, they're, they're irritating, let me tell you. I gotta wipe this guy out with ice. I don't feel like dealing with him. There we go. He took a lot of hits, too, I tell you what. All right, let me get that boomerang blade. And retrieve that armor. Because that's worth it. And when your boomerang blade retrieves something, it refunds the energy you use. So basically, that was free. I didn't, that boomerang blade was free. It didn't cost me any energy in the end. Gotta climb up the edge of this. Wipe that guy out. Climb up this wall of sorts. Okay, want to go up here and visit the shop. I think there's some good stuff in here. Yeah, I think I want the spicy incense. I want to increase my attack every level. There's only a few more levels left, but still. That's what I'm going to do. Ha! Huh. I just made a blind jump there. That is always a huge risk if you don't know what's out there. There's a nut that landed on the spikes. Retrieving that is going to be tricky. I may not even bother. I'm actually going to see if I can get away with that. Hold on. We're doing something stupid here. Okay, I see what I can do. I can land here, throw the boomerang, and we're good. I actually got that one nut. You don't have to do that. I'm just really picky, and I wanted that nut for no reason at all. Anyway... 
It's now time to take on the boss. I'm gonna equip the boomerang blade just in case I have a chance to actually hit him with it. Here's a heart, do not take it. I just spent the token because this is my last chance to spend the token, probably. And even if I spend it later, it would give me the same thing on another slot machine because I think the prizes are predetermined that way. Alright. This is the best time to hit him with the boomerang when he's below you like that because then he can't really hit you. Also got to do some crowd control so I don't get swarmed. There we go. Death load is done like nothing. Here's a mega heart. Do not take it. That would quite literally ruin everything. Here's Martyr. You can take it if you really want it, but I'm gonna skip it and get some more money. And now we're off to fight Eternal Star. As the eighth boss. As you can see, I have 43 armor, so we're doing pretty good at that in that department. Oh man, getting rid of that guy was annoying. I know I could turn off the lasers, but I am actually trying to conserve my energy. In fact, I should get more energy. There we go. Because at some point I'm gonna want it, that's for sure. And I dealt with that guy. Like, when the Mace Knights shoot their thing out, you can actually, like, oh, this only works with Ace, by the way, not Nina or Hawk. Actually, it works, it works with Hawk's whip, I take that back. But anyway, it doesn't work with Nina. But anyway, um, when they shoot out their thing, in the Mace Knight's chain, or whatever you want to call it, you can actually attack that to kill them, or to damage them. It's amazing. Okay, so this side path contains Vibro Focus. It takes away four of your max energy and increases your power damage. But it also adds on HP, so I have no choice but to skip it, because I don't have- there's no more HP lowering Augs in the rest of this run. So once I'm at 1 HP, I have to stay at 1 HP now. No HP upgrades from here on out. I have to skip them all. And now we gotta do the same glory zone again. Because the game loves this glory zone so much when you play this seed. And I forget what's here, I may not end up even taking it. I just always complete glory zones, like I said. Oh, it's the Owl Hawk arm. So if you're doing this run as Hawk or you're focusing on powers, definitely take the Owl Hawk arm. That's there for you. I just wanted to turn off that laser to make things simpler. Is there anything down here? Yep, there's a box down here with some energy. That's actually mildly useful. And if you're tricky here, you can climb up the side, but if that doesn't work for you, just use the platforms near the, the middle there. That's actually easier. Oh my gosh, that hurt, okay. But I have 47 armor, so I'm not actually feeling the pain that badly. All right, so carefully jump through the laser if you decide not to disable it. Yeah, I probably should have taken the Owlhawk helmet, then I could go crazy with, with powers a little bit more, and it would, it would effectively double, like, how much energy I have on average. Because it'd be a 50% chance of not using powers. But anyway, enough of that. I'm gonna see what's in here, even though the shop reappears later. Do not take Blue Lander. You might take an, an upgrade for your Shockwave sidekick. That could be a ton of fun. I'm actually gonna take the attack damage. I've made my choice. I'd like to take the repro too, but I don't have enough nuts. Oh well, the repro is not crucial. The main advantage of this run is just all the freaking armor you get. Also, this guy is here and I want to kill him. There we go, he's gone. Problem solved. I guess there was no reason to do that. Ha! Whoa! Whoa! You can use Force Nova to block the cannons if you have to. Especially when you're trying to get close to them to take them out. Or you can just get hit and tank it. There is a lot of armor in this run, like I said. But be that as it may, I still like to keep as much armor as I can to give myself the greatest chance of victory. I mean, it's not like I'm gonna fail this, but um... I don't know, I guess it just falls into the category of there's no kill like overkill. Oh hey, if you want to get fancy, you can actually go up this with your double jump. That works really well. Otherwise, you can just go up the center, and with correct time you can get up either way, so. Or if, you, if you've if got air dash, that's probably a little bit more tricky. 
but still doable, I imagine. I'm actually gonna sacrifice my armor and take all the nuts. I already can't- I can afford the penguin now, let's take the penguin. I don't even care about Hoarder's Might, I have enough attack damage, plus 17 is good enough for me. Well, Eternal Star, prepare to be eternally dead. Okay, I gotta dodge that. Oh, jeez, the projectiles are the most annoying part of fighting this freaking boss. Then when he spawns Black Flaps, you want to explode them all with Force Nova, because that will deal massive damage to him, and he will probably die. Probably. There's the Intensifier. That stacks really well with Drake Offense Arm. And I'm gonna, I mean, Shade Spur is great, but since I have Double Jump, I may not need a Lock Platform, so I'm gonna take more money. And now it's onward to level 9. Some people call this platforming hell, since there's not really much solid ground to stand on, and hey, it's the time way to get serious. That glitch just refuses to go away. I'm starting to think it's caused by DX Tori, the program I'm recording with, but even after I close it, I think the bug persists even if I restart the game. Yeah, but I'm, I'm eventually gonna figure out what causes that, so it can either be fixed or I can avoid it. Oh well. It's just a minor text bug, it's not a huge deal. Oh, got him. You can feel free to disable those lasers down there, but I don't have much energy to work with since I didn't take Owlhawk parts. And this is pretty simple here, too. Just some, like, simply timed jumps. Oh, this part's fun to get through. I don't even know how you do that part, so I just cheat with Force Nova. I'm down to three energy now, which I'm not the most thrilled about. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna lie, this is probably the trickiest level in the game, but remember when I took the Gapminder? I took the Gapminder, didn't I? There's a Gapminder in this run. Yeah, when you fall down in the pit, you don't take damage with the Gapminder. So as you go through this level, it's kind of better to just fall into the pit rather than get hit by an enemy. So exploit that as you will. Because pits are safe once you have that. It's kind of funny. Freaking love the Gapminder. Oh, there's that guy down there. Get out of here! <laughs> Got him with the boomerang. Okay, jump through here. Kill that guy. Jump through when the laser's turned off. Climb this wall of falling platforms. And then... Hope that you have your double jump handy, and... Don't fall- yeah, I highly recommend double jump for this run. If you have air dash, that's cool too, but... As you can see, this double jump just gives me so much freedom and options to dodge stuff in midair and spin around and kill things and... I don't know. It is widely believed among the 20XX community that the Drake of Pint legs are the best legs in the game. And at this point, pretty much everyone agrees. Wow, this is irritating. Let me just get rid of your shield. There we go. You know, that would have been a non-issue if I had taken Quantum Spook, but like I said, I'm not a fan, so I didn't take it. Oh, jeez. Okay, this is fine. I made it. Huh? Oh, I tanked a bullet there. That's another armor gone. Not that it matters. I have a ton. Oh, there goes five nuts. I don't really need the five nuts, do I? I think everything's okay. I don't need to restart this for the eighth time. Oh, gotcha. There we go. Carefully climb the wall, don't get hit by the fire. And... ha! Gotcha. Okay, that health actually gave me armor and I got away with it. That was great. Okay, so we're gonna say no to that. Because that looks very unfun. And then we just gotta squeeze through here. Jeez, man. Take out these guys. Refill your energy. There you go. That, that's handy. Yeah, if you're really careful here, you can kind of squeeze past the fire without getting hit, but there's just so many enemies in the way. Like, avoiding damage completely in this game is pretty freaking difficult. But here we are. We're about to fight the level 9 boss, and we have 1 HP and tons of armor. That's all that matters, is that your max HP is 1, you can have all the armor you want. Fantastic. 
Well, time to kill Dr. Dimondal. Or Bright and Sharp. Does he look bright and sharp to you? I guess it's all subjective. Okay, dodge the rollster wheel and he throws. Oh, jeez. He's using Shade Spur. Wanna be Eternal Star? Get out of here with that garbage. Oh my gosh, that's what makes this boss so tricky. He just has all these attacks that he spams kind of all at the same time. And there's this freaking beam thing from the, the Astral Twins. Oh, I need Vera. We gotta reflect those Quint lasers. This is why I took Vera. Okay, he's almost dead. Let's just spin to win. There we go. So we get a re-beginner, which if we ended up using it would not be that helpful. We would come back with one HP and no armor. And another spicy incense, very late to the game. But still, it's a free upgrade, so I can't complain too much. And then if we wipe this guy out, we get, of course, five more nuts. There we go. <clears throat> and now it's on to the finale. Level 10, baby. Level 10 in 20XX is always the final level. Unless you're playing Endless, in which case it's not. There is no final level until you decide to make there, a, make there be a final level. Frickin' Endless. Double damage on level 9. What a load of garbage. Still fun, though. Still fun if you manage to outscale the game. Kinda hard otherwise. I need the Flame Shield. I, or at least I want the Flame Shield. Ha 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 ha. Gonna wipe y'all out. Climb this wall. Kill you. And that's how it's done. Ladies and gentlemen, Ace with the spinning glaive. Give him a round of applause. Ha, I got that guy and I landed back up here. Wow, that was risky. And stupid, but so much fun. Wow. Okay. I also have explosions disabled, which makes it easy to see while I'm killing stuff, in case I didn't mention that already. I know I didn't, so... I take damage avoidance very seriously, and turning off the explosions makes that so much easier. All right, all right, that's enough. We're gonna climb this wall. Yeah, that's how you have to do it, nice and slow. We're gonna double jump over these spikes and just take a shortcut that way. I'm gonna retrieve this nut. There. Double jump over these spikes again, because that's worth it. And the way you wanna get through here without disabling the lasers, you just wanna dash and not jump and then you know, go through just like that, just what I just did. That's actually pretty simple to do. It's one of the easier things to do in the game once you know what to do. Otherwise, you could you could just turn off the laser with Force Nova and jump across if that's more your thing. Spin to win to get rid of the red guy. I tried to squeeze between the fire, but that's very tricky. At one point, I had 60 armor. I'm down to 58 now. That's a ridiculous amount of armor either way. It's almost like getting 50 or 60 armor in a run is easier than getting 60 max HP in a run, that's for sure, or even 50. There's an achievement in this game for getting 50 max HP, and I could make, I could have made a walkthrough of that, but the game got updated, so the level two hysteria seed that I had is no longer hysteria, it's now uncharging force. So instead of getting double augs and taking triple damage, I don't do that, so I can't get my max HP up to 50 with that seed anymore. I'm hoping that eventually I'll find another sheet with 50 HP and I can make a walkthrough for that silly achievement as well. I guess the achievements are kind of silly when they're based on randomness and you can't reliably get any of them in any given run. Unless you have a seed, like we're doing here. Okay, that guy's gone. Get rid of that guy. I'm double jumping while attacking. This is kind of some high level moves, I guess. At least, <clears throat> it took me a lot of practice to get this kind of thing down. Whoa. See what I did there? I used Force Nova. It's just, just so many things to keep track of and get used to using while you're in these runs. 20XX is kind of a hard game. Maybe not the hardest game, but it's it's pretty difficult for a start now. At least it was for me. But now it's like my addiction. I cannot freaking stop playing this game. 
I find it to be very fun. Okay, there's my flame shield. Nuts! I got the nuts! Because I'm nuts! Haha! <laughs> okay, can we just say no to ice or fire? Say no to fire. There we go. Alright, a little bit more armor before we fight the final boss. Because now it's time to take down Arlen Flat. But first, we must go shopping. Let's see, what do I want? Vitality Scavenger, useless. Twinifier is totally useless. I, if I take this, I ruin the achievement. Oh look, more power damage. Why not? Why not just have more power damage and more speed? We'll do that. I'm gonna turn on my flame shield one more time. Then pick up energy. And then step through the door. Dr. Arlen Fat. Chief of dieting or something. I don't know. Anyway, we made it. We have 1 HP and 61 armor. And now we're gonna try to keep all of it. Just gotta hit Arlen Flat's legs so he'll lift him so he can get through. Oh, I already got hit once. That's just sad. Okay, so which is stronger? Attacking is stronger than powers. But I'm thinking powers still do a significant amount of damage. So I might just hit him once with my fully charged primary and then hit him with ice a couple times. Because that probably does more damage than waiting for my wave to recharge all over again, hard to say. Do, 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 do. Okay, I'm, I'm focusing really hard trying to dodge all these friggin' fireballs. But at least shows it's possible, at least with double jump. Wow, I got hit. That makes me sad. Well, still got eight energy left. I probably won't be flying through the ending sequence with Vera. I definitely don't have enough energy to sustain that. I think, in fact, if you want to, you can pretty much tank this entire fight if you end up with 50 or 60 armor like I did. I just got hit again, dude. I'm taking ridiculous damage, but it doesn't even matter. It's great. I like how my HP is one. This is one of those runs where HP is actually completely meaningless. And that's why it's perfect for the achievement. It's just so perfect. If they ever update the game again and add another prototype augment, it'll probably change what you find on this seed and ruin everything. But at least at the time of recording this, this is like the perfect seed for it. Bang. Okay, he's in the red now. I think one more room crossing and he should be done for. Oh, jeez. Okay, jump over the fire. Oh my gosh, I'm dodging so many things at once. Or rather, failing to dodge so many things at once. Yeah, the this final boss fight is always so spammy with the damage that you can take. Oh my goodness. Spin to win! We just won it all. I'm gonna equip Vera just as a backup plan, even though I probably won't be able to fly much with it. Sometimes Vika and Jess will appear here, so you want to kill them for two extra points. They're not here for some reason. Might be a difference in the test build. I'm gonna break down the wall myself. There we go. This is how you get the Heartless achievement, is you leave Al behind in the cage. And people always call me a monster when I do that. But now we're basically getting two achievements in one. So, uh, hooray, surprise achievement that you also might not have. Of course, if you're Nina, you might not be able to break that wall very well. Although I may, may be underestimating the power of the wave beam and or the scatter blast. Hard to say. But yeah. Leave Al behind in the cage for another achievement. I guess when I title this video, it can be Armored Core and Heartless. Because you have to be Heartless to- Oh wait, I didn't leave him behind. He came with me. I guess something broke the cage open. I'm not even sure. You know what happened? It was actually the Penguin Repro. He broke the cage open and freed Al. Okay, so if you're going for the Heartless achievement, don't take any Repros. Simple as that. And there you have it, folks. I took 47 damage throughout the entire run, 
I dealt 76,127 damage. It took 42 minutes and 57 seconds, so it's a bit of a long run, because I'm slow with this maybe, but hey. Final nut total was 86. There's 86 nuts I didn't even need, but that's fine because I had Hoarder's Might. And there were no thorned hulls in this run either, which increased your attack damage with your HP, which makes the final shell basically a free upgrade. So anyway, that is going to be it for now. You now have the Armored Core achievement if you followed this walkthrough. The seed is, of course, Get Good, G-I-T-G-U-D. Type that in Seed Racer, play, the, play it Destiny style, always take first portal. And you'll have it. The achievement is yours. So yeah, there you have it. Here's the ending picture again, just for the fun of it. I'm Sporkinator, thank you for watching. And may we meet again in the future.